I didn't want to do a whole lot of videos making it because that Pico was such a disaster. So I thought I would wait a few months and then start doing the videos. Oh my God, this lighting is driving me nuts. Today, because I'm gonna probably want to get in there with my hands and it's gonna displace the water, Archimedes is going to displace my water. <laughs> Update on the app. Update on the Aptasia. <laughs> Update on the Nemone on the move. It was trying to lodge itself up in here. It decided, I guess, it didn't like to share the space with that Aptasia Nem, which I need to take care of pretty soon. So it worked its way around and now it's in the shadows. That's kind of a cool spot for it underneath the ship there. I'm debating putting a little spotlight on it. I have a spotlight under the rock work over here that I forgot all about. That little blue ball. I don't know if it works anymore. I'll have to plug it in and see what's what. Fishies are a little freaked out because I was in there doing a little work on the Zenia. I think I'm getting most of it. Looks pretty good. <laughs> but I did do a big water change and I sifted the sand. So we've got tons of floaties in here. I'm gonna turn my water polisher on and see what happens. I got a couple of gallons here, I think. We're just gonna go ahead and dump it in. I got this from the display. I was thinking maybe I'll fill it halfway up with display water and the other half with some pre-mix. Let's see how dirty it is. <laughs> well that just flew all over the place didn't it? Let's, uh, let's get the pump going and then I'll put those babies back on. My extension cord situation. I'm gonna leave the cord up on top for the time being. I'm gonna put it at 76 and see what happens. Let's turn the pump on, see if it even comes on. Yep, just like I thought. I'm gonna have to get in there and clean it out anyway. And I've already suction cupped it down to the bottom. Oh, there we go. I was afraid I was going to have to pull that off. This is why we want to test everything before we go plopping it down. And which is why we're going to want access to it afterwards. It's because what happens on these little magnet motor deals, well, I guess all pumps. A little bit of sand in there or just buildup of... advantage of your natural surroundings. What I probably should do, there it goes. You can run them dry. <laughs> okay, put the cap back on. Uh, come on. And then we will stick it back in there. Suction cup it to the bottom. It's a little noisy right now, but it'll settle down. That was super quiet when I had it in the little Pico Reef. I don't think I'm gonna fill it up too much today because I'm going to probably want to get in there with my hands and it's going to displace the water. Archimedes is going to displace my water. <laughs> um, so maybe I'll fill it up to here or maybe just down to here. And that way it gives us plenty of space to play around with. So we've got the additional water. I just dumped it in there and I did not have the video recording. 
All I did was dump some wa the clean water in there, uh, water that I prepared yesterday, um, fresh off the RODI filter. And I was pointing out that in addition, this little pump here, I put a sponge in front of it there to hopefully keep even more debris out of there, but I really like that chamber. That's gonna work out nicely. Get some rocks on top of that. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna put any sand in here. I'm gonna do my best to keep sand out of there. We'll get that screen. We'll get some rocks on there and maybe a little um, GSP to start or maybe, oh, maybe a leather coral, one, my lemon lime leather coral. That may, might be kind of a nice feature if it ever got really big right there in the middle. All right, time to get some leads on this bad boy. Well, I thought I was ready to put the leads on, but before I get those on, I need to put a cover on. A cover does a few things for me. It minimizes the evaporation, which means it's especially crucial on these little nano builds because evaporation means a change in salinity. All I'm doing here is using a soldering iron to melt the plastic. You gotta make room for those cords. Let's see if she fits. I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to cut this. So I've got an airline tube in there. I've got a heater in there. I've got two pumps and a thermostat thermometer. A temperature meter. This bowl is not turning out to be as easy as I thought it would, but it's definitely easier than that tiny little Pico bowl. Um, this is about five gallons. <laughs> I thought it was three gallons because I went in online and did the measurements and did the math and it was looking like it was three, three and a half gallons. But you know, I grabbed one of those Home Depot buckets, fill it up and to do a water change and I, and I use the entire bucket and I still have a little bit of water left at the bottom. So I know it's five gallons based on that. Um, I've had this established now for six months, five and a half, six months, somewhere in there. And I, I didn't want to do a whole lot of videos making it because that Pico was such a disaster. And so I thought, I would wait a few months and then start doing the videos because I know it works. Something that I did do off camera is the filter that's, or the, um, the pump that's in this little stem here. I actually ended up um, getting a, a large sponge, or not a large sponge, but a bigger sponge um, from a sponge filter again, you know, it has a hole in it, it's round. And I took the pump and I shoved it in there and then I shoved the whole sponge into the base and that is keeping really clean. Before it wasn't keeping clean and the pump was kind of getting backed up. But now that I did that, and then on top, I have that little mesh, and then I just put rocks on top. Um, a few smaller live rock, and then I put the big, the big giant one on top, and that's it. That's all I have in there for filtration, um, nitrification really. And the live rock is what's doing most of it, and the coral. And of course, uh, some Calerpa that I've got in here floating around. <laughs> um, another thing that I'll do a video on later is the, um, the water movement that I have going on. I did have a, one, another one of those $3 pumps in there, but it just wasn't putting out enough, um, enough movement for this larger body of water. It was plenty for that little tiny one gallon Pico. And I actually had to um, tune it down a little bit. Um, but this one it is too much. <laughs> and so I had to choke it off. But anyway, I've got it going. I still have not come to um, a DIY lighting situation. I do have the air pump coming on uh, about 10 minutes every three hours. 24 7 and 
I don't know why I do that. I feel like I need to get some oxygen in there. <laughs> but um, the water movement seems to be enough. But I just leave the pump on anyway. I love the bubbles. I love the effect of the bubbles just kind of being blasted out there. Whoosh. And it drives the clowns crazy. They're, they're in there. I don't know if it removed detritus from the rocks or what. But they're in there popping the bubbles and running around, scrambling, thinking it's food, I guess. There are a lot of wires in there. I've got two pumps. So that's two wires. I've got the, um, the thermometer in there. I've got the, um, the pump, the air pump. There's four. Four cables that go in. And they go in through that little top. And I still don't have it completely um, <laughs> situated the way I want it. Oh my God, this lighting is driving me nuts. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I kind of see the light way at the end of the tunnel, but um, I'm not there yet with lighting. It's definitely the, the LEDs that I have up on top here is plenty for the tank. But as you can see, I don't have enough white LEDs on here. And so I can't get that camera. I'm going to have to go grab the, the little filter that I have, the orange filter. I fried my other controller. So now I have this controller. This one actually is RGBW. So it has four different controls. It will have one for the, the white lights but as soon as I get them all configured on there. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this is a monstrosity of a mess. So now originally I... I did these LEDs and I think I, I showed how I did them. It's basically uh, two blues, a white, and a UV. So it's four LEDs in one little chamber there. Oh, I wonder if that's, this little green LED is blocking my white. This is the white LED. It's the only white one that I have in, t in this entire thing. And I have these greens. These greens and the and the um, red really add a lot of color. They're adding a lot of color um, into the tank, and they're they're like bringing out some of the some of the zoa coloration that's there. That's really orange. Without the green and without the red LEDs, that really doesn't come out as much. And same with the uh, monte and the leather coral. Those colors really pop. Um, do I have, I think I have some yellows with the reds. Do I? Yeah. So kind of yellow. It's uh, it looks orange, but it's yellow. Um, I'll do a, I've been playing around. I've been popping off leads, putting leads and, and I've got them in this little hodgepodge of a mess here. Uh, that's the controller that I have, and I've got um, rheostats, you know, trying to tamper down the amount of amps and voltage that's going through them, and that does a pretty good job. So I can I can tune in the amount of light that I want um, without having to use the controller, because the controller this is not going to be the last controller that I end up with. There's another one that's a little bit more um, robust. And I'm forking out the big 12 bucks for it, so hopefully it works. <laughs> anyway, that's the tour. This, oh, um, little, little side note kind of thing here. Is this little ring has the blue lights on it. And the way I've got it configured there is I've got the blue lights mounted to that aluminum. It's aluminum wire. It's a... Uh, I believe it's a 10 gauge aluminum wire and I've got them mounted with um, right onto the um, to the aluminum so that dissipates the heat so I can really crank those blues up if I want to and this ring will take up the heat from them. These other ones I don't really need them that bright I just need them for color and as a result they, they don't even get warm Eh, maybe they're a little warm, as warm as my body temperature, but they're not going to burn out because they're 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 on very low. But the blues, I crank them up just a little bit. I've got a four, five, six, and a UV. Is it four? Yeah, four, five, six, and a UV.
I need more UVs on there. Oh, that's what I was going to do. This ring was going to be my blue ring and my UV ring. So I was going to add four more UV LEDs on that ring. And then I can probably do away with this entirely and get another ring of whites. And I don't know how I'm going to do it, actually. That's a whole lot of LEDs that I'm putting on up there. <laughs> They're really cheap, though. They're like pennies each and... I have, I bought like 50, 50 each of those. I think they're like $10, 50 for 10 bucks or something, or 50 for six bucks on each of those. And so I've got a lot of them. And my plan is to just get them all on one of those controllers and see how many I can get on there um, and crank them up and crank them down. So this particular reef bowl four blues is working out as far as the spread goes inside there four blues is working out really nicely four reds and four greens that that combination of four seems to be working out really well so probably i'm going to end up putting four four whites as well all right so that's enough blabbering spicy reef here signing off I got it. How do you know if it's up or down? I was wondering why that ball kept getting bigger, and then it hit me.